So Elizabeth Hasselbeck was talking to uh, Sean Stuckey from the Patriots, and they were talking about how the NFL is considering uh, being less strict when it comes to marijuana use. In fact, they want to kind of higher, have a higher threshold for marijuana in the bloodstream so you don't have all these players suffering consequences for doing something that everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people do, and it doesn't really cause any real health issues. Um, now, Elizabeth Hasselbeck wasn't too happy when he didn't agree with her, so let's take a look at what happened. Well, the NFL might be getting closer to loosening its policies when it comes to marijuana use, but would that be sending the wrong message to their young fans? As far as public sentiment is concerned, I would think most parents here uh, would think this is this is unsettling to think that the NFL is going to open the door for more pot use. But I understand the sentiment that if you allow NFL players to use marijuana, that you're going to find a bunch of kids out there uh, using it as well. I'm particularly sensitive to this issue because I come from a family where six out of seven of my aunts and uncles at one point were all addicted to crack cocaine, mm -hmm. including my mother, who is uh, who was addicted up until a couple years ago and was addicted from the time I was 12 years old. Right. Uh, so I understand that. And however, I was also uh, a high school teacher where I taught uh, young teenagers. And I am intimately aware of what, it, of what the teenagers are influenced and not influenced by. Mm. The NFL changing its policy towards marijuana will not influence these teenagers. Let me give you an example. If the NFL were to immediately uh, ban the use of all alcohol amongst all football players, you would not find a widespread cessation of alcohol use amongst teenagers. Mm. So, um, perhaps, uh, perhaps. I, you know, Sean, I, I think your story is so interesting and you have a unique perspective, both as player, attorney, and just with your personal background there. You know, I think the concern is, hey, how can you say we're working on brain health and, and let more pot be used? And the kid debate is certainly there. Thanks for being with us today. Conversation will continue. So she's equating brain health. <laughs> she ends the, that little segment by suggesting that the brain health issue, she's so fucking dumb, mm -hmm. that the brain health issue of marijuana, that marijuana makes you want to eat Cheetos, is the same as the repeated banging at hundreds of miles an hour that an NFL player's head takes that the league turned a blind eye to for so long. Right. Um, and is thankfully starting to recognize as a significant problem, as are zillions of parents. Like, they're not even remotely related. It is as apples and oranges, but because it's the head and she thinks she's onto something. But w where's your one piece of information that suggests that the use of marijuana, other than chronic use, maybe. I don't know, I don't even know. Where's your study that says the long time use of marijuana decreases brain power, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And we're not, and again, and also, by the way, the NFL is not responsible for what kids do. The NFL doesn't have a drug policy. Yep because it's trying to be a good role model for kids. That's not why the league exists. It's nice if these guys are role models for kids. I suppose, I don't even know who gives a shit, but I suppose some people do. Yeah. But the NFL is, if you're gonna have a drug policy, the policy's gotta be fair. And the NFL is theoretically trying to change this policy, thinking about changing it. One of the best players in the league, Josh Gordon of the Browns, ESPN reported tested positive for marijuana. It would be his third time in the program. Mm -hmm. He's looking at a year ban. Maybe That's he'll so, only get it. It's so crazy. I mean, it, it's crazy to me because if it's like a performance enhancing drug and it's going to give you an totally. edge over other players, absolutely. Right. You got to ban it. There needs to be a consequence to it. But marijuana, I mean, they're only harming themselves. And I, the only reason why I say that is because marijuana isn't going to do anything to enhance your performance, right? It's just, it's going to make you do things like eat food that you shouldn't be or, eating. But also, as we've learned more about it, I mean, and that, I said the same thing. So that's a yeah. little bit of a, but that's a little bit of a cliche because here's where it might enhance your performance. And here's what we know of players who, by the way, it's, it's use from all indications is widespread in the NFL. It's just guys know when they're gonna get tested and they manage to avoid it. And Josh Gordon bears some responsibility because he's an idiot, right? And he shouldn't have gotten caught and he should have been able to, if you know you might get tested, uh, go a week without smoking weed. Almost every state where it is, uh, where it's legal for medical purposes, one of the reasons that it's legal, one of the indications, one of the accepted prescribing situations for a doctor to prescribe medical marijuana is pain. Mm -hmm. These guys are in tremendous pain throughout the season. And we are in a system where we'd rather have these guys prescribed major league narcotic painkillers than a number of guys who would be like, I would rather just smoke some weed. It helps with my pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
That's better. That's better than Percocet or Vicodin or whatever those things are, or hillbilly heroin, the thing that Rush Limbaugh got addicted to. And so it's nuts, and this policy is set in another era. And the NFL is talking about changing it, of lowering the threshold, meaning that it wouldn't take as much pot for them to, to get you. Right. But then reduce the punishment, at least. Right. So they'd be like, yeah, you got to, you know, whatever, so that maybe your fifth time you'd get a game. Like it's, and it, by the way, a two-game suspension in the NFL for guys making, like a guy like Josh Gordon, who I don't know what he's making now, he's probably on his rookie contract, but he's making, probably, he could be making a million dollars a year, you're losing one-eighth of your pay. That's a ton, that's a yeah. lot. Yeah. But you've taken away a whole season for a guy who might have a career path of could be as little as six years, maybe as much as 12 or 15. It's, it's insane, it's crazy, and it's outdated. And, and let me just say one more thing, and I know I've been talking a lot. Sorry, no, it's okay, like, do you? Get them. Goddamn players union involved in this. You know, unions in this country are nothing anymore, and we've been crushed. The people who gave you the weekend have been crushed. You like not working Saturday? That's because of unions. Believe me, your boss wants you to work on Saturday. So unions gave you the weekend off, but now we have 7% of the country as a member of a trade union. That only increases, I think, to 11% if we count the public service unions that, you know, Wisconsin and Michigan are trying so hard to crush. Wisconsin has crushed, or at least the bargaining power. So. But the, there are a few strong unions left in this country. One of the strong unions left in this country are the Major League Baseball Players Association, the NFL Players Association, NBA Players Association, the Sports League, because what do you know? The unions are made up of millionaires, and that gives them some strength. So what needs to happen here for guys like Josh Gordon and to buttress what Sean Stuckey said, and he's, of course, exactly right. He's a lawyer now, by the way. He only played a couple years. He played in some other leagues. But um, Players Association needs to do is stand up for Josh Gordon, and they need to make this change not later, but right now. Mm -hmm. Like the, the Marijuana is changed. Maryland voted like I got the numbers in the Maryland House last month, like 125 to 13 to legalize mar medical marijuana. Pain was one of the things it was legal for. 125 to 13 in the House, I think 44 to 2 in the Senate. Mm -hmm. Guess what? There's sort of a consensus that at the bare minimum, if it shouldn't be legal, you should at least be able to get it from a from a prescribing physician. And the notion that somebody smokes weed and they're gonna like have their whole job taken away from them, it's insane. It's insane and the union has to stand up and do something about it. The players have to stand up for the players. Well said.